Hello friend, I'm Danny Walker. I'm a former Miss Montana USA as well as a pageant coach. And today I'm gonna to be talking about some really big style mistakes that you might be making in the evening gown competition. If you wanna see more content like this, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel and then also hit that notifications bell so that you will know when new episodes are released every week. And if you really love pageants and wanna support the channel, then be sure to check out the merch store that's linked below. The first thing we can talk about are accessories. So much can go wrong with accessories. One of the things that I've seen recently is when a contestant tries to color block her earrings with her gown and the tones are off. So let me please help you. Let me change your life right now. Linked in the description is a color wheel. And color wheels are what designers and artists use to create really beautiful, well-coordinated color combinations. So that way we can avoid having the really strange pair of earrings that doesn't make any sense with your gown. I'll also see contestants wear gowns that have crystal or AB crystal stones all over the gown. Then they decide to go with a colorful earring. It just doesn't make sense. It's not cohesive. And every time I see it, I'm just like, why? Why? Especially when I'm judging, I'm like, why? And sometimes I make notes whenever they let me and I give those tips to the contestants. If you do want a color block, there is a right way to do it. Get yourself a color wheel. A really, really important part of styling is hair. Hairstyles, oh my goodness. I can't tell you how many contestants I have seen wear their hair up when it should have been down or wear it straight when it should have been curled. Oh my gosh, it makes such a difference. And the hairstyle really has to complement your age division as well as your gown. So if you're wearing a gown, for example, with very common example, with a very high neck and really big earrings and your hair is down and filled with extensions, it can be a lot. It can be overdone. So you have to create some balance. That's why a lot of the times you'll see contestants wear their hair up or wear it back when they have a high neck. It's just this nice bit of balance that we can be looking out for. I've also seen contestants go overboard with hair extensions or wear hair extensions that don't match their hair or weren't cut into their hair. I recently left a comment when I was judging a pageant for a contestant because she looked great in interview and then for her onstage competitions, she added a ton of hair extensions and you could clearly see where her natural hair ended and where the extensions started and it just didn't make any sense and it was so unnecessary tacky glitter heels oh my gosh i'm not gonna say that i've never owned a pair but these are like the heels that you wear to your first homecoming when you don't know any better ladies we can do better than these heels we can do so much better in fact i actually have done the work for you i already put together a ton of beautiful heels that will work for multiple pageant systems and multiple gowns and i have linked them in the description below just, just go check them out. There's no excuse. I already did this for you. Speaking of heels, tippy tops do not go with everything. I'm not saying that they don't go with anything. I'm just saying that they don't work with most things. And usually if you're gonna wear a tippy top heel, please wear it with a gown where you're covering the shoe where it's not exposed. I get it. If you find the shoe comfortable or if you wanna elongate and create some height, okay no problem, but if you're gonna be exposing the shoe, there's such better options. If you're loving this episode so far and you want even more tips, then don't forget to check out my pageant prep playlist because you will find lots of tips there as well as the pageant recaps. There's so many little nuggets in there of wisdom that you can use to win your dream title. And also if you wanna go a step further, then I am linking my free pageant prep course in the description below. I have lots of extra information there that I don't share on the channel. Whew age inappropriate gowns. I could probably have an entire episode about this, but first what we're gonna do is a little quiz. I'm gonna pop up two gowns right here on the screen. I'm gonna give you a couple seconds. I want you to think about them. And I want you to ask yourself, which one do you think is appropriate for a teen contestant, potentially, and which do you think is more appropriate for a Miss contestant? Think it over. Okay, that's plenty of time. This dress is great for a Miss Division and this dress 
would be more appropriate for a teen contestant. A huge styling mistake is choosing a gown that is aging you into the wrong division, and I see it both ways. I see teens wearing the wrong dresses or younger age divisions, and then I see Miss contestants wearing gowns that are more suitable for younger contestants. So you have to be really aware of this. You have to do your homework. We have the internet now. You can look up the internet on your phone. There's no excuse for not doing your homework, for not familiarizing yourself with the types of gowns that are doing well in your pageant system. And also be aware that this can vary from the local, state, and national levels. The gowns we see doing well, for example, at Miss USA could be very different than the gowns that are actually winning the state competition. So be aware of where you're actually competing when you're choosing a gown style and make sure it is age appropriate. I have a disclaimer for this. Even though I just said to pay attention to the gowns that have won recently for your pageant system, don't take this piece of advice and try to copy another queen. And when I say copy, I mean copy. The same gown, hair, makeup, accessories, all of that. It's not bad to pull inspiration from another title holder, but if that queen has won within the past five years, and especially if she's very popular, and if people are very familiar with her, it's a really big mistake to try to copy her, because chances are you're probably not gonna pull off that look in the same way that she did. Just because it worked for her doesn't mean that it's gonna work for you. So what happens most of the time when I see contestants copying a recent former title holder is they end up just being a second rate version of that title holder. And what you wanna do instead is to be the best version of yourself. Since designers like Sherry Hill have become very popular in the past decade, we've seen a rise in custom couture gowns, which are quite expensive. They're gonna range you anywhere from $1,000 to $10,000. Yep, that's what contestants are paying. In fact, recently I just heard of a contestant who paid $18,000 for her gown. Wow, to have a budget like that, right? So because these custom couture gowns have become very popular, contestants have been trying to find different ways to customize gowns that are at a lower price point. And I do this all the time for clients. We do customize gowns quite a bit, but it has to be done in the right way. So I see a lot of contestants that are adding things to gowns that aren't necessary, like an extra cape, or they're adding a panel or an overskirt. So please be really, really aware of what you're adding to the dress and make sure that when you do add, that it looks like that was the original gown. A huge mistake is when contestants take fabrics that don't exactly match the original piece, the colors might be a little off, or maybe they're using a completely different fabric from the rest of the gown. And it ends up being really obvious that that piece was added on after you bought the gown, and then it just becomes a distraction. So be very, very aware of any of these extra accents that you add to your gown to customize them. On a similar note, let's talk about overstoning a gown. Yes, it is possible to overstone a gown. I know, you really wouldn't believe it. But if you're competing in a natural pageant system and you overstone a gown or you add an enormous amount of opulent appliques onto your dress or rhinestones that once again, don't really look like they went with that original gown, you could be overdoing it. And I have seen this quite a few times at pageants. Adding more stones to your gown isn't always going to enhance the gown on stage. It has to still maintain the integrity of the gown to elevate the look and not cheapen it. Those are all the things I think that you should avoid when you are styling a gown for the evening gown competition. I hope this episode was able to help you. And worse comes to worse, if you are still struggling selecting your gown, then you can also head over to my website, Danny Walker Official, and you'll find information there for wardrobe styling services. I would be more than happy to help you select your dream evening gown. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode. I hope that you're gonna come back for lots more and I wish you the best luck at your next competition.